Hello, how are we doing? Welcome back to the channel. This is First in Line Podcast. Before we get started with today's episode, I want to address a couple of things. First, right, new host here. Uh, so hopefully I'm really excited to get this started. Uh, second thing, right, you guys peep the merch. Okay, if you want to support the channel, if you want to support the progress that we're doing here, please first link down in the description. Uh, more examples of shirts like right here, right here, like this one. Okay, take your choice. Uh, stick to the end to find out how you can enter a giveaway to get one of these shirts for free. All right, so here we go. All right, so first in line podcast, we have Jason Chavez Cruz here. So give it up, Jason Chavez Cruz, my guy. Uh, let me just start off by first of all saying like I met Jason in high school. Uh, I didn't really start talking to you until you were like about a senior because um, we are. Three years apart, right? Three years apart. Are we one year apart? One year apart? Yes. We're one year one apart, year which apart. is insane. I was a senior, yeah, we're juniors when I graduated. That is crazy, yeah. So we didn't really start talking until about our junior year. Um, and uh, Jason, you've been somebody that I've always looked up to and somebody that like represents what it means to be first in line, um, literally in every <laughs> sense of the word. Um, so here we are. I'm going to give the opportunity for Jason to introduce himself, uh, and then we'll kind of get started with the interview. Yeah, well, one, first of all, appreciate being here, letting me know to come to your shows, all three of you, and very honored to be here. My name is Jason Chavez, and I'm the council member for the Ninth Ward. I won my election with an amazing team back in November, I think it was November 2nd, with like 58% of the vote. So it was pretty historical. There was eight people running, and I didn't expect it to be that big of a margin, but mm -hmm. uh, honored to represent the place I was born and raised in, from East Phillips neighborhood in the south side of Minneapolis, and now... I get to represent the place that helped grow and allowed me to be who I am today. Awesome. Well, as you guys can see, we got an amazing story here, so we're going to get straight into it. So, Jason, from, from wherever you think you want to say the beginning of your story is, right, go ahead, tell us. I'll probably inter interject a little bit, kind of yeah. ask some questions, but wherever you think you want to start from the beginning of your story. I'll start with me, my mom's belly, and then I'll move forward like 10 years yeah. the reason is uh mom and dad are both uh, mexican so they're from puebla mexico in a small place called matzaco has around 2,000 people mm. and then they made their way across to the united states here in minnesota in the east phillips neighborhood by santo rosario i don't know if y'all know that church it's mm -hmm. uh next to little earth in east phillips and i was born there and i say that that's important to me because my mexican background is like really critical to about who i am today and part of the reason why i decided to run but Born and raised East Phillips, went to school there, did everything there, um, and then we're going to Anderson Community School, which is that's what it's called now. And mm -hmm. then went to Crystal Ray, where we met. Yep, all yep. of you actually <laughs> uh, met at Crystal Ray. Did a lot of work there. There was a school work program right there that was really cool. Did mm -hmm. Wells Fargo for my first three years, Regents Hospital my last year. Then went to college in Duluth, which was you know two and a half hours away from <laughs> the city, and yep, yep. had to do a lot of work over there. And then eventually came and did work in college i mean from college did work here and then decided to run for office but awesome a little bit about yeah that's a little nice little roadmap and we're going to kind of go into every single aspect here Perfect. um talk to me about some unique obstacles right of not just being a first generation student yeah. but being jason chavez right what is <laughs> what were some obstacles uh and start you can start us off at like middle school yeah. And then work your way up all the way till, till the present day. Yeah. So in middle school, when I was in eighth grade, <laughs> I let my brother use my phone. Mm -hmm. And he used it at a park. We went to a field trip. And you weren't allowed to use your phones. He was texting somebody on my phone while I was playing soccer. Mm -hmm. He got caught with my phone. And then he got in trouble because he was texting somebody. I got yelled at by the principal. They took me out of the park, took me to the principal's office, and told me that I would never, ever graduate high school and that they were going to tell Chris Ray specifically not to accept wow. me. So I was waiting for my application at Chris Ray. They told me they wouldn't accept me. My dad took me in the office. He picked me up. I like, started crying. And mm -hmm. then that was one of the moments where I was like, okay, I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I'm never going to make it in life. And... At the moment, my mom was forcing me to go to Crystal Ray, which is yeah. really funny. And I was like, I don't want to go. But after that moment, I was like, I want to go there. I need to go there. And I was like praying at night. Like, I need to make sure that I go to Crystal Ray, even if it, they don't accept me. And I was scared that my principal was the one that was saying, you're not going to graduate high school ever. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make sure you don't get accepted to Crystal Ray. So I had that behind my head every every day in high school. Mm -hmm. First three years. Of, well, we'll can, we can jump into high school in a bit. Yeah, yeah. But that was very, very instrumental because they kicked me out of my graduation. Wow. And, and like that just stood with me the rest of my life. Until this day it's like i need to prove this person wrong and yeah i did but we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit great 
So how were what, what were those um, obstacles in high school? What were some unique obstacles again in high school that for people that are listening that are in high school going towards high school, yeah. um, just of a first generation student? I know Cristo Ray is a little bit different because yeah. it's kind of tailored towards the first generation yeah. student, um, but even then, I feel like there are some some obstacles when you start applying to colleges, when you yeah. start applying to scholarships, when right? you start getting into like the now it's like out of this net yeah. and into like a bigger, more competitive net. So um, what are some obstacles, if any, that you really experienced in high school? Yeah. So I started once I got to junior year, I was very nervous because I did really bad my freshman, sophomore, first year of junior year. Mm-hmm. So I was getting ready to apply to college. And I was like, my grades were not good. Uh, the teachers looked at me as like the kid, the class clown or, or like mm-hmm. the person that would mess around in class. And I told myself towards the end of my junior year that I'm like, OK, you know what? Like. I have one year left yeah. and I need to get my good grades. I need to study hard. And I knew that I had to study like 10 times harder than a lot of people because things wouldn't just mm-hmm. easily come to my head. So I had to study a lot and like hope that like colleges would look at my, my grades, at least the last semester of junior year mm-hmm. and beginning of senior year. And one advice I would say is that like, even if you don't have the best grades, at least that junior year, senior year, work really hard <laughs> and yeah. colleges really see that and they see that like you you can transform i went from like two point something to like a 4.0 student toward yeah. the last <laughs> yeah. last year and and that really helped me a lot so i would say like work hard no matter what even if you've had bad grades in the past colleges see that difference mm-hmm. um apply early apply everywhere apply to every scholarship that you can get uh i didn't have the best grades and i still got like three full rides yeah <laughs> and i would say that's because i applied to everything i could get my hands into and mm-hmm. I don't know, like use those things where people don't believe in you and try to not motivate you as your weapon. I know I used it Mm -hmm. (laughs) when I told you earlier that my principal told me I would never graduate. I was like, you know what? He might have been right in in what he thought was going to happen. But I used that as an energy to move forward. And I was able to graduate with a lot of scholarships. So, yeah. And then being, you know, somebody who always Chris is right. You're a very proud alum and we're extremely proud to have you as an alum. And, you know, now that I work at Chris Ray, which definitely not my story right now but we'll get to one day maybe <laughs> yes you will um talk about now moving into college right this is where a lot of first generation students experience <sighs> that that shock right yeah. the the culture shock um because right at this point we're first generation because we're the first ones to do it yeah um and so we don't have siblings that have done it um we don't have cousins yeah. uncles right especially with the important part is right in college getting yeah. to know people Right. We don't have the doctors in our families. We yeah. don't have the lawyers. Um, so talk more about now how that felt to you. And, yeah. you know, graduating college is very impressive as a first yeah. generation student. Yeah. So what like what did you do to, to push yourself through and not only like push yourself through, but I mean, and I'll let you I'll let you get to what you did in college. for That, <laughs> that was also a different a great different thing that you want to hopefully want to share with us. Um, but how you actually leverage who you are yeah. to get you at the end of, uh, of St. Classica as the president. Yeah. Whew. So first year came in, I was doing nursing mm-hmm. and it was something I thought I wanted to do before I realized I hated blood yeah. and that I could never really actually do it if I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would actually attribute it to my family, the reason I was able to stay and graduate. Mm-hmm. So my first year came, it was okay. I didn't do the best, but I did what I could. Mm-hmm. And then the following semester, I was like falling out of track. And then I heard that my brother Brian, cousin Josue, and my cousin Alan all got the same scholarship I did, yeah. and they were going to come to Saint Scholastica. Yeah. And I was like, dude, if I continue to do bad at school, <laughs> and if I leave this school, which I wanted to do, I was ready to just drop out. And like, yeah. you know, I'm like, you know, what? college isn't for me. I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. Then I would tell my cousins that it was okay, and, and which is it is okay to be fair. Like right. it's fair yeah. to do that. That's your life. But like, I don't want my cousin and my brothers to use that as an excuse to leave. Mm-hmm. And, like, when I found out they were coming, I was like, okay, <laughs> no matter what I have to do, I have to stick these four years here. I have to try my very best, and I can't let them have that excuse that my cousin did it, my brother did it, so I can do that too. Mm-hmm. And I stayed the whole time, and I did better in school because of them. So okay. maybe that's not, like, what everybody else would like to hear, but sometimes the people around you are the reasons you end up being like, I have to try my hardest. Mm-hmm. I hate it here. There was a lot of racism there, part of the reason why I wanted to leave, yeah. and a lot of people doing really bad stuff to me that I was like, you know, I want to leave this place. Mm -hmm. And my grades weren't the best. And my my friend, my best friend, actually, I will sleep on his couch Mm. all the time because like things were not good. But because of them, I was able to like stay and eventually 
Yeah. Out of like what six family members at Saint Scholastica? Yeah, six, yeah, six family members. <laughs> well, six including me. Yeah, six family members at Saint Scholastica, and all part of like the student. Yeah, student body. All student body government. Yeah, which is which is fantastic. <laughs> so a lot of there's a lot of articles right talking about Jason and and who he is and what he's done right for the community and um, one of the articles that I read was something about right like wherever Jason goes right people follow and you kind of touched about this with with like the scholarship at Saint Scholastica yeah. right how you go people follow. Um, and I think it's impressive to become president of the student body, right, at, at a college. I think that's really <laughs> impressive. Um, but then also to go on and be elected yeah. for the, the city council, right? Um, so I kind of want you to talk about what is Jason, who is Jason, like, as a leader? Yeah. Like, I, I, I know you personally, right? And, like, I've seen you, I've seen videos of you campaigning, yeah. right? I've, I mean, I was in Philadelphia where everything yeah. was going down. Um, but like, I've seen you work, right. And you work like, yeah. like it's almost like two different people, right? Like, <laughs> like I, like we're, we're out there playing pool and you're joking around having a great time, right? <laughs> laughing at everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then there's, there's this other Jason where it's just like, you got to get things done yeah. and you get things done. Yeah. Right. So first I want you to tackle, right. What kind of leader are you? Um, and, and, and how did you pick up those leadership skills throughout yeah. your journey as a first gen student? And then. After that, if you want to talk about more, well, we'll get to the second one, but go ahead. First one, what kind of leader are you? How did you pick up those skills as a first-gen student? Yeah, so I would say what the, one of the reasons why I'm like the way I am right now is because I'm young. I'm 26 yeah. years old. I'm very young. I mean, I don't know if you think that's young, but I think it's young. And no matter what you do at a young age, especially if you run for office, the number one thing people will point out is that you're too young to represent me. Mm -hmm. You're too young to know anything. What do you know about the world? You've never done anything to actually, like experienced life so how can you lead a city mm -hmm. and i take that very personal because it's like just because i'm young doesn't mean i can't do it yeah and it makes me work like 10 times harder <laughs> in that race you probably saw i was door knocking every day i yeah. had hundreds of volunteers come out yeah. and like we were kicking our butt off because we knew that like our opponents would always say you're not good enough you're not yeah. good enough you're, you're not good enough so it's just that's just who i am like i knew that like even growing up i wasn't the smartest kid in the room ever like that's just the fact I'm not, but I am for sure one of the hardest working kids in that room all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I live my life. I know that like my parents told me that no matter what you do in life, just give it your best all the time. Yeah. And the next, the things will follow. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I just live my life, making sure that I, I try my best so that when the day comes and I don't, I don't succeed, that I knew I gave my best and that what is to come is going to come. And that's fine. Yeah. You can live with that. And if people see that, <laughs> they see my passion. I mean, they know that at least for Ward 9 specifically, the place I, re I represent, it's mm -hmm. like, I'm going to do whatever I can to be able to feed the people I represent. Yeah. And if I can't do that, that's when I stop doing this job. And I think when people care so much, they can see that. Mm -hmm. And I know at least the people I door knock, they saw that. Yeah. <laughs> and then even if they didn't fully agree with me, which which happened, I had a lot of people right. that voted for me that didn't agree yeah. with me. Yeah. Like, I know you care about this place and you wanted to make it better. And that's the reason I vote for you, even mm -hmm. if you don't agree. And I think that's, I don't know. I just care too much. <laughs> yeah. The moment you stop caring is the moment you should just leave office just, at least. And, right. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, like, I mean, I remember we were having, we were having lunch for like a birthday, a birthday lunch. I don't remember when in the summer. Um, and you had just come from door knocking and you came in, you know, you had lunch again, like this whole, like <laughs> this whole switch, right. Between, you know, door knocking, hardworking person trying to get into, into office. Right. And then, moving over is it is, is that correct to say into office or is that kind of only for president no it's good okay, yeah. okay. i don't I'm know into office now. i don't know um so getting into office right and then going in having a good time with friends and then you were like gotta go back door knocking <laughs> like, like right away you know it was it was it was like that's that's a moment for me too when i was when i was i had to look at myself and be like am i working hard enough for what i want in life like a lot of people also like you know they told me like yeah you're a hard worker you get you get things done but then i'm like you know, there's there's different levels, and I think you're just at like that different level that you know I can do nothing but like respect and and kind of like try to be more like of. Um, I think one thing that happens is that when you do, and you all you've all seen this yourselves, like when you do, sometimes you work so hard for something, but if you don't make time for the people that you care about, or at least getting away from the thing that takes up most of your life, like yeah. that for me that's important. Like even when we went to go pool, I went to go pool. With you right. Guys. Yeah. I only went. I was busy that day. <laughs> I went. Let me show up for like forty five minutes, and then I'll leave because like. I still want to be there and I still want to like, for me, it's, I also get de-stressed. Like I'm with my friends mm -hmm. that I care about. Yeah. And even if I can't be there the whole time, it's important for me to like, at least show up <laughs> Yeah. and like say I was there at least for a little bit. But Yeah. 
Yeah, and I'm, I mean, as a friend, like we appreciate that a lot. Just knowing, like, we know you, right? And, and you're and you're having you're taking time out to go play pool with us to do this podcast with us, like, super super appreciative. <laughs> um, so you kind of talked about right when you are running against people that are saying like you're too young, right? You can't represent us, um, and all these like disadvantages that we have, not just as being young, but yeah. as being first gen. Yeah. Um, and I kind of I think about it like there's a lot of disadvantages and it's almost so you can use that to fuel yourself. Right. Yeah. But I also want to talk about what have you figured out as like, what are some advantages of being a first gen student? Right. How do you use that as your advantage? Right. Cause it's people nowadays, right. They want someone who represents them for being unique. Yeah. So how do you find those uniquenesses in being a first gen student and how does that help you? And you can yeah. right, share the, get into, into office, college, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um, but how, I just want to kind of have a different spin to the narrative yeah. of like, you're not good enough to like, yeah. you were born with this, yeah. use it. Yeah. And you're right. 100% like, go, be, be enough. I represent, my ward is like 33% Latino. Like yeah. my ward, a lot of them, um, our community doesn't vote in ward not necessarily for mm-hmm. a lot of reasons, whether it's like undocumented yeah. or green card or too young or, you know, just doesn't have access to know when elections are happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but that helped me out a lot. Like <laughs> being able to be like, I want to represent my community who oftentimes is left out of policy decisions, who mm-hmm. oftentimes is being told that they're not good enough, who oftentimes are saying that, okay, cool. You guys can do whatever you want, but we're not going to actually support the things that you care about. So like for me, at least growing up with all these things that happen when you're fresh and students oftentimes can be disadvantages, but it isn't always <laughs> right. like there's ways that like you're like you know what like my family taught me to work hard and a lot of our community it's like mm-hmm. driven on hard work and if you work hard you can at least get to a point where you're fine so i i oftentimes do dwell on like some of the disadvantages that happen but at least yeah. in my ward specifically people are like oh you you're the only one that speaks spanish i don't yeah. speak spanish but you re- you're going to represent your people and that is what matters to me or you're going to be able to represent what this ward looks like and that's going to be good so at least that that did help me a lot <laughs> mm-hmm. even if the people voted weren't latino they were like you are reflective of what this ward looks like and you do care about the people that live here so yeah. i'll say that that helped yeah awesome so um i kind of want to move back a little bit yes so you're i think when you know like every every year almost it seems like there's another Chavez, another crew is coming in through Cristo Rey, right? A very big family, very proud family, yeah. I think, and um, a very, like, amazing family. Um, so I think it's a lot of us can relate to what it is to be a first-generation yeah. student, but me as someone who is a first-generation student but yeah. a middle child, right? Like my older sister yeah. experienced what you're experiencing. I did not, right? Can you kind of shed some light on what it means to not just be a first gen, but like yeah. be, be, be the first in line, yeah. be the first generation, <laughs> right? The, 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 the oldest of your, of your family. Um, so like, how does that differ from, right? As from my own personal experience, right? Like yeah. I saw my sister and I was like, never do that. Yeah. Definitely do more of that, do more of that. And so like, I kind of started planning myself, right. And, um, you know, Brian, amazing guy, yeah. like shout out to Brian, right. If he's listening, up, um, he probably thought of that too, like very, like seeing you and kind of like, yeah. And you guys are very, very close. Right? My yep. sister's four years apart, so I kind of... We're like, less than a year. I'm October 11th. He's October 1st. 11, wow. 11 months and what, 20 days? Something right. like that, yeah. yeah. So close enough, right? But like, what, 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 is that, what is that experience as like literally being first in line? What is that? What is that what I, I want to take it back a little, a couple years when I was younger. So yeah. I was the first in my family, immediate family for that four-year degree. And first in many, like I have families that did like the one year certificate for like mm-hmm. nursing stuff. But mm-hmm. my cousin Daisy, who's um my cousin Shanti went to Crystal Ray mm-hmm. and St. Scholastica, her sister. She was like the first one to go to like any school and she was young. She had to learn English through her teachers. Like you know, like a lot of us yeah. have to learn English through like our teachers or right. our parents don't speak it. Yeah. And I had to learn a lot from my teachers, but she was the one that helped me like Mm-hmm. learn english more how to spell my last like you know that the, all yeah. that basic stuff you need in school like at least right. you had a cousin that went through like mm-hmm. at least the first two, three years of high school and not high school but three years of school and, like, schooling yeah the person you can look to so like i know life wasn't easy for her from that aspect like she always had to like teach us or like she had to learn it on her own mm-hmm. which made me like learn it more from her and my teachers instead of my parents who like 
you know, it felt more difficult. So I always look into look at her and be like, you had to do what I didn't have to do, right? I didn't have to be the only person that had to teach my family English. Yeah. Uh, but moving forward, since I was the first one to do the four year, that was very difficult. Like I said earlier, like <laughs> the first year was very difficult. Yeah. Uh, but you also start to realize that like there isn't that many first generation students all the time, and mm-hmm. the harder you work, sometimes the better outcome there is. But Sorry, repeat the question because I think I got a little off track. That's so good. I was just asking more of like uh, the unique obstacles of being not just like a first generation student, but like yeah. being the first generation and being like the first in line. Like for like my older sister was first, right? Then it was me, then my little yeah. sister, my little brother, right? So my little brother has advantages that I never had. You get right? to teach him and exactly, help him right? walk you know, him through FAFSA, everything. Exactly, right? <laughs> right? And I had advantages that my older sister didn't. I also have my own unique obstacles that my older sister didn't, right? Yeah. But what, what were your unique obstacles of? Um, not just being a first generation student, yeah. but being like the first person in your immediate family, knowing that Brian, right, like he was watching, um, your cousins were watching, right? right? Um, I think it goes back to like how, who you can get help with, right? Like you can't go back to your family, like, hey, I'm struggling with this. I need mm-hmm. help. You have to like rely on your support system at school, which oftentimes isn't the best at all. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to do things on your own, or you have to be like the guinea pig and right. explore different options so you can succeed. Where like when my brother and cousin all of them came, I was like, "Hey, this class is good. You can do this. You can do that. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. This is a good opportunity for you." And they get to do less of the guinea pig stuff, yeah. whereas we have to like explore and figure out our lane and what we want to do. Yeah. So. And staying on that. How how important is that for you to be that person that have that role? Like, how is that important? It wasn't important until I realized my cousins were coming to my school. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I would say, like, for other people that don't have relatives that go to college with them, it's important for a first gen to realize that, like, they're holding this thing for their family mm-hmm. and that their family is looking them to succeed or, or, or graduate or do whatever they want to do mm-hmm. so that the younger people, whether they're just friends, families, people that are around you, can see that like that could be me in the future so you have to carry that with you knowing that like if you don't do that that's okay but there's people watching someone you don't even know is always watching. someone is always watching yeah i'll just say that someone's always watching whether you like it or not Mm -hmm. and whatever you do is your next step that person is going to try to follow that lead so yeah that is also a very challenging thing to know that like you're carrying i call it like you're carrying your village your village on your back yeah (laughs) and and seeing what can happen from that so that's for everyone though like i know when you went you probably knew that people are watching (laughs) yeah and they still are. They're still watching yeah. it right now. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. I think, I think it's very, uh, very, uh, very, I think it's something that we all experience, right? Is that like that pressure, that load of yeah. like our parents sacrificed a lot, yeah. right? And it's like, what are we doing to repay that sacrifice? But then we also get into this like, it's my life, right? It's what I want to do to be yeah. happy. Um, and something I want to touch on is you've already talked about it a little bit, right? Going through middle school, um, eighth grade was when you really were like determined, like, I want to get into Greek story because yeah. the principal told me I'm not doing it, yep. right? And then it wasn't until you noticed that your cousins and your brother were coming to the same yep. class ago where you were just like, now I have to stay here, right? I'm gonna, and I'm going <laughs> to yeah. prove that I can do it so that they can also know that we're yeah. doing it, right? That, that trailblazing. Yeah. Um, I want you to try to talk about what, how you saw success as a first-generation student when you were like in middle school, what what was success to you in middle school? Mm-hmm. What was success to you in high school? What was success to you in college? Mm-hmm. How that changed, things that made it change, and then what success looks like to you now? Middle school, I was a young kid, so you can't judge me. Was, I have no judging. It was, success was being the cool kid. Okay. <laughs> okay. Being the young cool kid, that yeah. troublemaker. Unfortunately, that's just who I was. Like, yeah, I was not a hard worker until my last year again there's a trend i don't know what it is uh-huh. my last year of every time i'm about to graduate it's where i try my best yeah except college we'll talk about that yeah yeah uh, so when i was in middle school my priorities changed and i think everybody's priorities change as you get older as they just progress in middle school yeah. for me it was being that cool kid that was, was like what the cool thing was mm-hmm. in high school it was trying to pay as little as i could for college so at the moment, it was like applying to everything, like I mentioned earlier, applying to every scholarship that I could, applying to every college that I could, mm-hmm. and trying to make sure that I could at least make sure that I wouldn't make my family or myself pay too much when I graduate, mm-hmm. if I were to graduate. Because I still didn't think I was going to graduate even if I went to college. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what success looked like for me at that moment. In college, it was 
it changed a lot. <laughs> like I said, I wanted to do nursing at first and then yeah. doing social work. Success for me was just graduating. Like mm -hmm. I went to college thinking I was never going to graduate, that I was just going to be there, whatever, try to graduate, and I wouldn't make it. But knowing that I would be the first in my family, that I was going to make it, and hopefully leave a mark for others to know that they could do it too, that is what success looked like for me. Mm -hmm. And a couple years after I left, say fast guy, I guess I left a mark. <laughs> yeah. And to me, that's the best part when you allowed other people to be like, that could be who I am one day. Or like, not just me, but like, I can graduate too. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Not a big, like, you know, yeah, big, I mean, like, no. goal or anything. It was yeah. just graduating because was... I didn't think I could do it. So, right. walking that stage, I was like, I did it. And again, I proved my principal in middle school wrong. I graduated yeah. high school and, and college. Graduated college. And I mean, you know what? Maybe I'll do grad school just so I can tell hey, him that. There you go. And man. He added me on Facebook. After, did he really? And during my graduation, I was like, yeah, I'm not accepting Which graduation? High school. After high school graduation. And I walked that know. stage knowing them, like, I did it and I proved you wrong. Damn. Yeah, I still hold the grudge. Yeah, I mean, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of ways that, that we have to find ways to like light the fire, yeah. right? And some of us, right, not including myself, can do it all by like yeah. wanting to be a better person and all this stuff, right? But at the end of the day, I mean, right, selfishly, and I joke around all my cousins, right, when I when we're all together, and um, and I'm just like, yo, like. I have more degrees than, than my whole media family put together, you know what I'm saying? Like, but it's like, it's it's what I do because yeah. it's like, that's who I am. That's what lights my competitive fire, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, You're very competitive. Very yeah. competitive, right? Like, in college, I I mean, there was many times where I, I mean, no no hate to, this might sound very bad, but no hate to like the bio majors out there, the chem majors, but um, I was sitting biochem and there was many times where I was just like, you know what, like, this is a lot. Let me just do bio, you know, cruise my way out of here, yeah. put on cruise control. Like, I'll be good. I had many, <laughs> many of those conversations with yeah. myself, right? Um, and, but, like, the thing was, for me, it was, it was all internal. Yeah. Like, I think it was maybe three people that ever knew those intentions were in my head, right? Other than those three people, like, nobody else would have even thought, like, he's not going to do biochem, yeah. right? Like, I wanted everybody else to know, like, I went into college biochem, yeah. and I graduated biochem, and I wanted people to know now more people are going to know that that, that that those stats are going to my head right um <laughs> but like i think like we all have to have that that, that fire because yeah. those that fire kind of ignites you and yeah. when you get to that point right like as a first gen student as i think just as anybody right yeah. like when you crawl towards a point like because a lot of us right we're crawling and we're yeah. trying to get there that feeling of like success is like you take every inch of energy you can right so that feeling of success right when you graduated high school when you graduated college how did you feel when you graduated college? Like, because I also want to get to the point where graduating college is is amazing, yeah. right? And I think it's something that a lot of us have to put more energy into getting more first gen students yeah. to graduate college, um, if that's what they want in their plans, right? Um, but then I also want to talk about the difference between graduating college, because that's once again a huge, a huge yeah. accomplishment, but then getting elected into the office, right? Because, right, I, I can do my homework, I can pass my tests, nobody's gonna vote for me to not graduate college. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a whole different type of accomplishment, right? And like, they're both big accomplishments, yeah. but I want you to kind of, first of all, tell us how you felt when you graduated college, but then I really want you to zone into how you felt, yeah. the, the, the thought process, right? The weeks leading up to the voting, Oof. all of that stuff, because a lot of us, including myself, right, I don't know what goes on yeah. behind the scenes, right? Like. Questions like, to me are like, do, like, do you, did you already know you were gonna win before? Like, like, like what <laughs> we goes can on, ask right? All those questions, you know all yeah. those questions, right? Um, <sighs> but I really want you to talk more about like, what it felt like to have the people say, "You deserve it. We want you to represent us," yeah. versus like, "I did all my stuff, so you have to give me this this degree." Yeah. So for college, and I, I that was my parents' victory. Like, mm -hmm. that's I think that's all they ever wanted. Like their children to graduate college so like that was my victory but it was theirs as much yeah like, like they made it they left mexico came to the united states and saw their son graduate college and that was like big for them like i know the moment they cried i cried it was just like mm -hmm. a big <laughs> emotional day for all our family so it was just an amazing feeling transitioning that into election very different because mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of times 
from the outside, it looks very easy. Like, you can just run. Yeah. Jason's getting all these endorsements. He's yeah. door knocking. He has a whole bunch of volunteers. People believe in him. Yeah. But it's not as easy as your mental health is being drained every day. You go on social media. You get called names. Your face is all over, like, the news. You're getting called crazy. You mm-hmm. get told that you're too young, that you're inexperienced, that you don't have a real job. You know, you get all those negative things that just get thrown at you every single day by all your opponents and then mm-hmm. you have people that you thought would support you from the beginning but didn't <laughs> who were your friends and were too mm-hmm. scared to support you not mm-hmm. you guys i mean like political oh, yeah, speaking, like, yeah, <laughs> like people that were too scared to get involved because these yeah. were not people didn't know who was going to win mm-hmm. so you have that the negative to be able to you know focus on every day and yeah. feel like you should just not run and at times i contemplated dropping off the race like yeah. it was not easy but then you take away the positivity right like there's people in the latino community that are like wow I see myself in you. Mm-hmm. You are the young person that is going to represent me and our community, and you're going to fight for us because you believe in this. And then I saw myself born and raised in this neighborhood, East Phillips, who oftentimes has been underinvested, forgotten about, left behind, and government oftentimes is like, you guys are not worth it. We're just going to put pollution into your ba- your backyard. Who cares about you? Mm-hmm. And that made me mad. <laughs> and you get to fuel all the positivity of your neighbors being like, you know, we deserve, de- you need deserve change. We deserve someone that actually listens to us, someone that represents us. And that's what fueled me at the end, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it was a big, it was a big change, like trying to flush out the negativity, uh, which was a lot every day. Yeah. So I mean, some people, who was it? Uh, Carpio. <laughs> yeah. be like, your, your face is all over uptown crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would Another shout, shout out. out to Uptown crime yeah. <laughs> they don't like me <laughs> but they didn't win so it's okay <laughs> um, yeah so you can focus on the negative but there's a lot of positivity there's people that support you you knock on doors people like you're changing the world like you i want you to represent me like that's the best part and that's yeah. what i started focusing on it so the first few months was difficult the summer was really good my opponent got very nasty mm-hmm. he made videos about me i'll show you after it was very nasty made videos that were about me, like how in experience, I would go door knock, my face would be in my picture, saying he lives with his mom, he's, I would door knock, people were like, are you 17 years old? Because your opponent came and door knocked and said that you're 17 years old. Wow. I was like, oh, you need to be, you can't be 17 and run for office. Yeah. 20, I was 25 at the moment. Um, so there was just a lot of lies that were happening and didn't really know what would happen. So it was like two weeks up to election, still rocking like crazy the day of the election we had my party election party mm-hmm. at moon palace so yeah. my team we were lip uh, we were at the office people were texting phone banking door knocking everything and i remember showing up to my party like 20 minutes late it was already full people yeah. were there and i was like oh, i don't want to see nobody i go to the back room but before i entered i told my team i was like i don't want you guys to lie to me like i don't want you to be like you won just kidding we lost like yeah, i want to yeah, know yeah. that when you guys tell me we won that we won yeah <laughs> i don't want to feel like bad that i think we won and lost right mm-hmm. so i go to the back room and i actually start praying i get on my knees start praying in the kitchen and i'm like whatever happened is meant to be i don't know what the result's going to be but i'm there then i start, start thinking everybody's like just in the front of the party just yeah. living their best life and i'm like in the back about to cry <laughs> and then i walk out i start walking forward and my friend grabs me he's like who I think he just won. And I was like, stop lying. <laughs> and I go to the front and there's a screen and it shows seven out of the nine precincts reporting, which is like, there's two, there's nine precincts, which is nine voting locations in Ward 9, or mm-hmm. at least places like of neighborhoods. Yeah. And so we weren't even like 100% reporting. It was like, what, 70% reporting? And I looked at the numbers. We had at that moment 55% of the vote. There's eight people in the race. <laughs> so my top opponent, who I thought was going to do really good, had like, he only had 900 votes. So I think he had like 11% at that moment. Yeah. And I was like, the race isn't finished yet, but even if we were to lose the last two precincts, we won this election. So I called it. I was like, we won, y'all. <laughs> and we started celebrating, and it felt good. Mm-hmm. I started thinking my team, and then my mom hugged me. And that's when I just started crying. Like, I, I lost it there. I was like, we won, we did it. And yeah, and just thinking about it because this is video. Yeah. Someone put this video on Twitter. It's just such a good video. It just reminds me of when things were easy because things are not easy right now. <laughs> and yeah, so it was emotional because it was a lot of work and it wasn't like my victory. It really wasn't. Like 
there was people from like Little Earth that were supporting me there. That mm-hmm. like it was their victory. Those people that were door knocking every single day, it was their victory. And like Ward Nine specifically has been asking for change for the past eight years. Like that's just a full fact. People were like, we need yeah. somebody different. And, like it was their victory, and I was just able to be a part of that. I was able to be like the person that they voted for. Yeah. But it isn't like right me. It was like the things that we together believed in, and that's what. Got us in this blowout. I would call it. Yeah, I mean, I, I would also call it. There were how many? Seven people running total. Eight, well, eight including me. Eight including you. Yeah. Seven against so you, seven and you got fifty-seven percent of the vote. On the first ballot, because this ranked Minneapolis is ranked choice voting, so you okay. can choose your top three. You choose your first, second, and third. If your first person doesn't win, it goes to the second person. Your vote goes to the second person. In order for it to not go to the got second it. ballot, you need to get fifty percent plus one vote. Okay, so, we got so it had to kind of be like. So other wow. races you saw like go to ring choice voting. There was yeah. a race where it went to ring choice voting and my friend Robin, um, and she won by like twelve votes or something. Mm-hmm. So like it can get really really close. It was a historical election, massive turnout. Local elections yeah. do not have massive turnout. This was massive turnout. And amazing just to like again from like my perspective seeing this, I was in a whole different city and <laughs> just like the the whole like you deserve it. Like that was insane. Like it, it's. There's a lot of people that put in a lot of hard work. And like I said, again, right, this is very different because in college, you put in the hard work, you do what you need to do, yeah. you, you get the degree, right? But like in this, it's like you do the hard work. Some people, may we may never hear of them again. Like that's that's the end of the career, right? Yeah. Um, and you being this young, like Latinx person yeah. winning 57 votes against seven other people, um, just like super inspirational yeah. to someone who's really close to you. But, you know, like that kid that is – like hearing about you right like the the best part was the next day when you get messages from people you grew up with yeah like what dude i saw you you made it and we're like the young latinx kids that were like hey like i don't know you i don't know who you are but i'm proud of you and the like the from our community it was just beautiful like that was i was like this is why i do it because <laughs> yeah. like even if whatever happens if i get an elected next year i don't care like let it happen that's the people's decision right but like the day when you want the amount of people in my community, our community, <laughs> were just like reaching out, and I was like, "That's what it's all about." Like, it's also about doing change. Right. Don't get me You're wrong, change, but yeah. like, seeing people like message you, just showing so much love, I was like, "Yeah, that's what made me want to like, you know." It still yeah. gets me. I sometimes go back. I'm like, "Oh my god." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's. I mean, a beautiful moment. I think it's a life changing moment for you, right? Um. So, what other, if any other, like moments in your life would you say are like life changing? life redirecting something that you think back to maybe not at the exact same level of, of what just happened right but like something where you're just like if that would have because I, I'm, a, I'm a huge person where i think a lot of times like even the smallest things i'm like if that would have not happened then i don't know where i would be at this point right like if i got into my number one college yeah i don't know what i'd be doing i don't know if i'd be happier i don't know if you know what i'm saying um so like what are some I the school i got rejected from and I got to speak at their school in November. Wow. St. Thomas. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm not saying like hindsight good. Cause yeah. Because like I got to go to St. Scholastica. Right. And I don't think I would be where I am today if I didn't go to that school and mm-hmm. stuff. But I think not getting accepted there. It was because my ACT score. One, ACT scores, I don't care. I didn't get a good score and look at me now. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. They're, they're good. You know, they're, you have to work hard. I'll give you that. But you can still make it even if you have like a bad ACT score quote unquote yeah. I would say that part like hit me hard because I was getting accepted to all these colleges and then St. Thomas said nope you have a bad ACT score and I was like cool that hurts Yeah. <laughs> let's move on <laughs> yeah so I would say that that part I wasn't supposed to run for office like the two days before I made my just like announced mm-hmm. I was on the phone with my friend I was crying I was like I'm not doing this I'm too scared I can't do this I can't do this I can't do this and I wasn't going to do it and he convinced me he's like you need to you need to you need to you said you were gonna do it. You want to fight and make sure that things are done differently in government. And like I was crying on the phone. I was like, I "Can't." And and then that combo switched it. And then yeah, so I, I mentioned that because yeah. <laughs> scary decisions sometimes are very difficult to make. And right, if I wasn't on the phone with him, <laughs> I wouldn't have done it, and I would have never got to experience whether I would win or lose. Yeah. So, but. Awesome. So you when you were talking about your victory is like. A victory for the community like a we thing yeah um and also very important to know like where your support systems are to be able to like go out there and actually ask for support right a lot of us 
um, graduate. I mean, we, we walk around with this, like, I can do it on my own. Yeah. This is my weight, right? Like, this is what I have on my yeah. shoulders. Um, and you, as somebody who, you know, you represent the people that are like, we want change. Yeah. We want somebody who's unique, mm -hmm. somebody who represents us in a way that yeah. we're proud of. Um, so what aspects of who you are, yeah. are you like the most proud of? Ooh. And besides my heritage, <laughs> I would say one thing that I really care about is I've been taking it a lot more seriously now. I think yeah. things can be very polarizing, but if you try to understand where someone's coming from, like, mm. especially in this job that I have right now, you have to like, you get yelled at 24 seven. That's just part of it. I signed up for it. I can't feel bad for myself, yeah. but try to understand what someone is going through or like why they're angry, why they're yelling at you, why mm -hmm. they are in pain and why they're doing something. I have people that have been like, they didn't even give me a chance when I first got elected. They're like, you're going to be this, this, this. You're going to be like your foreign predecessor and you're mm -hmm. not going to respond. Yeah. And they're yelling at me and they, they've lost trust in government. And we may not agree <laughs> in what they're talking about, but the fact that like I still respond with kindness because that's just who I am. I'm mm -hmm. a very kind person. Like I hate being mean or compassion or at least that you understand and like you're going to try to figure out to help them. Maybe not the ways that they want to be helped, but yeah. at least try to figure out how you can help them in a different way. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just who I am. Like, I can disagree with you fundamentally, but I'll still respect you as a human being. And, like, that's the least that people deserve is that respect. And I hope that people give me that respect or at least that chance. And they have after, like, they think that you're going to be this crazy person. And they realize, like, yeah. oh, you're pretty, you just want to care and you just want to help and you want to be respectful. Like, if there's one thing that people would get it, I hope it's that. <laughs> that they, they see that I respect them and I care about them. Mm -hmm. and... Yeah, great. I love that. Um, so let's let's transition to <laughs> kind of like giving advice, giving back to, to the people listening, right? Um, whether you're in middle school, high school, college, out of college, out of high school, kind of thinking about what you want to do in life. Um, what are some resources... Uh, whether it be like institutional resources, yeah. resources that you created yourself um, that really made a huge like turn into you becoming you, yeah. right? You doing what you're doing. Because I think it's, again, going back to the whole thing, like it's it's so easy to, to point at the things that we don't have in life, point at the things that, that we want that would make life so much easier, right? Yeah. Um, but I think it's it's very important to also like shed light on the mm -hmm. things that are there because there there's a lot of like, again, like perfect example, Chris Ray, right? When I was going through Christo Ray, my senior year, we just we just got two AP classes, yeah. right? When you're going through Christo Ray, there was no AP classes. Nothing, nada. Right now, it's like freshmen take freshmen sophomores are taking AP classes. What? I mean, it's crazy, right? Like they're they're it's I mean it's oh. the things that are being put into, okay, into you place. Go Ray. Right? I mean it's great. And <laughs> and one example that I was gonna say is, and this might sound very I, I mean it, it depends how you take it, right? But at Christo Ray, you kind of mentioned this, right? The the corporate work study program, where it's a private school. You have an internship that you go to five times out of the month, yeah. and you use, they use that money to fund your education. Yeah. Um, so that way you're not paying the X amount of money that it takes to go to a private school. Um, and then you get the, the great educators because they're able to work there. Um, and like that not only allowed me to go to yeah. private education, right, but it allowed me to kind of like develop as a professional and yep. kind of understand like this is what it takes to be in the real world. Even though I was like 14, right, 14 working yep. – at a corporate job, right? Having that on my resume just helped me out in college, all that great stuff. So shout out to Chris Ray. And obviously, like now I work for the corporate work study program. So in a way it's like, oh, that's corny, obviously, like whatever. Yeah, but but in a way, right, it's kinda <laughs> like the thing where it was important enough to change my life that I want to come back and, and make yeah. it even stronger for people that are that are going through the same thing and make it even better, right? Because at the end of the day, like you said, you wanna leave your mark, you wanna leave wherever you're going, wherever you've get yeah. wherever you've been better than before. Right. So what are some like institutional resources or just resources in general? I would that... say advice, maybe that, instead of resources and maybe we can touch it to resources. Yeah, the advice. one thing that I recommend everybody, no matter what, how old you are or what school you go to or what grade you're in, is do those one on ones. And what the one on ones do is like sit down with someone you think you want to be one day or mm -hmm. you look to or that you want to learn from. Grab some coffee or just go park or go somewhere and have a meeting with them and get to know them as a person and mm -hmm. hear them out and build that connection i know that helped me a lot <laughs> like yeah. i get to do a lot of one-on-ones in the past few years and when i decided to run all these people were helping me volunteer and i didn't do that on purpose it was mm -hmm. just people that i got to build real relationships with 
when you're not someone that's running, that's okay. You still get to like meet someone on a one-on-one -on -one level. And when you're looking for jobs, these are the same people that can help you get the job that you want and need. So those ones on one on ones are very critical, especially when you're relationship building. Because a lot of these jobs that people get aren't always because you're the best person applying, but mm -hmm. it's because of the people that you know. And maybe that shouldn't be the case, but that's yeah. the world that we live in. So right. you gotta operate within yeah. the world that we live in and, and make sure that you can do that. So those one on ones, set them up. I'm being I'm pretty sure that you do one on ones. If anybody here wants to do one on one, let me know. Beautiful. I'll do one on one yeah. with you. The getting involved part is really important. I think the more you get involved in college, high school, wherever you are, the more you can update your resume and that you can, you know, get better jobs. I was too involved in college and mm -hmm. I know when I was applying everything, everybody that would offer me jobs were like, it's because of your extracurriculars. You were just involved in everything. Don't bring yourself out, obviously, but at least it's better to come with something on your resume than nothing. Mm -hmm. And then update that resume. <laughs> Start early. Yeah. We started in high school. Yeah. And I know that I'm very good at editing resumes or editing people's stuff and making things sound a lot better yeah. on paper. Mm -hmm. I would just recommend people start doing that. And I can help. I love doing that. Awesome. I love resumes. That's my job. Yeah. Not my job. It's just my passion. Right. Great. And I think that's also like a big um, big difference in like what your career is, what your passion is, mm -hmm. like this whole understanding of like what a vocation is, right? Like what are you mm -hmm. called to do um, and kind of how – those intermix and um so yeah so i mean I, I i think it's it's a great like way to to listen to things and yeah. to and to go out there and like explore right because at the end of the day if you if there, there's a big forest right you don't know your way in you don't know where you're out yep. like but it's your job to start chopping down trees start yeah. finding your your way and and kind of collecting people along the way and kind yep. of um like in a way doing what you want to do for yep. your for your own happiness and for your your success exactly awesome so another th another question i want to touch on before because um you know you you work with a very at the end of the day like a powerful community right you work with powerful people people that make decisions right where money's going all that resource kind of oh, kind of talk right yeah mm. how um for those that are that are listening that might not identify as a first generation student yeah. Um, might not identify as a first gen, but somebody who is looking out to seeing how they can be a better ally towards first generations, yeah. to be a better support system. Um, what are some things that you would say to those listening in that that don't understand what it's like? And you know, like we this the big purpose of this podcast is not just to like help each other out, but it is, but like just to shed light on to the obstacles that we face and and the the upbringings that we come through, right? But um, to those that genuinely want to bring support in and not do it like in a yeah. in a huge like i'm a hero yeah. this is what i'm doing i'm doing it to be a hero kind of thing yeah. um because there's a huge difference between somebody being in a room and somebody feeling like they belong in that room yeah right so what are those there's an organization called Dulus. they do this like people that graduate college they pair them up with like a high school student mm -hmm. and i think if you can use that to like help mentor somebody and I know I did that when I was when I graduated. Yeah. If you can do that with a high school student, even through programs, whatever programs are available, we can help connect them. Yeah. <laughs> like that is good. <laughs> you get to mentor a high school student, you get to help them throughout their life. And it isn't more of like, oh, I can save somebody. It's more of like I can help mentor somebody and provide them resources that they might not have and mm -hmm. help them walk through difficult decisions when those times come. Because I know for us growing up, we didn't always have those mentors. Like, yeah. I mean, I know I didn't really always, you probably didn't either. Anybody here, it's very hard to have those mentors besides right. family yeah. when it's hard decisions or like not knowing what to do with your life. At least having someone that's older help walk you through options. I think it's really important. So get involved with those organizations and help young people out. Awesome. Uh, so before we, we kind of head off, I also want to ask you about the badge you have here. Um, kind of, I don't know if you can kind of show it to the camera a little bit. Strike ready. Oh, perfect. There you go. Strike ready. And then it says the time is now. Yeah. So right now the teachers union, so MFT, both Minneapolis and St. Paul are, mm -hmm. and their ESP, so their educational support professionals, their teachers are going on strike we actually that's where i was before this they announced mm -hmm. that they're going on strike because they're paying like poverty wages they're not being treated fairly by administrators and 
mm-hmm. they're going on strike to get better pay. You know, everybody deserves a living wage, and if you can't even, if teachers and ESPs do not have enough money to support their students in class, have food on the table, how can they teach these students? Like these right. teachers deserve full time teachers, full time ESPs to ensure that they can actually learn. So, part of the reasons MPS is failing is because of lack of support for teachers, and mm-hmm. we just. Uh, I was at a press conference where they announced that they're going to go on strike. So starting tomorrow at 7.30 a.m., teachers, unless something changed while we're speaking and there was an mm-hmm. agreement, teachers yeah. are going to go on strike. And I'm going to be at Green Central School at 7.30 with them. So. Awesome. Great. Uh, well, I'll give you this back here. Thank you. Super awesome to have Jason. Again, like super, super inspirational. Um, whole point of this is right to like get people ignited, get people excited. Like it, we're like we're here with you. We're here on this journey together. Jason shared his story. It's a great story. Many obstacles, um, and at the end of the day, it's a lot of hard work. Uh, I think everybody in the room can kind of attest to that. Like you have to, you you want something, go get it. Go work hard. A lot of times, as a first generation student, you already come in with that at the end, like those disadvantages, and you got to work harder to equal the playing field. Um, so keep going, keep working. I'm gonna give Jason one more shot to kind of give final shout outs, <laughs> final advice, uh, final word, whatever you want to say, man. Camera's yours, and then uh, we'll close it out. And it's been a great episode. Yeah, I'll finish it quickly. I never actually told you why I decided to run, right? True. It was two big things. I saw our city council and our government in general, anytime that they pass policies at the city, state, county, level, whatever federal government you name it, yeah. it always excluded undocumented immigrants. So you saw like the the checks that the Trump and Biden administration passed, it did mm-hmm. not include undocumented immigrants. And oftentimes that happens a lot at the city level. So I was like, I'm annoyed because that means that our families, the people we care right. about are oftentimes excluded from that. So I was like, we need someone there that is going to at least make sure that that doesn't happen or continue mm-hmm. to happen. So that's part of it. But also when we lived in Midtown Phillips, my family and I lost our home. And that was like a very scary situation. We were foreclosed, evicted. You know, the housing crisis. Yeah. I don't have to explain to you that. Yeah. So that is still very prevalent, at least in Ward 9, where a lot of people end up becoming homeless or evicted and rent continues to increase at dramatic rates. And yeah. that's part of the reason I was like, okay, this is enough. <laughs> Too many people in my neighbors are going through this and nobody, not nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, and people in office continue to ignore it or not take it seriously. Mm -hmm. So just want to mention that before we end. But I hope that like if you take anything from this, it's that you don't have to be the smartest person in the room. You don't have to be the most successful person in the room as long as you work hard. And even then, it isn't always enough. (laughs) It is a gamble at times. But if you work hard, you at least will get to a point where you will be okay. And I hope that's what people take because i know i wasn't the smartest in the room but i was a hard worker right <laughs> and i still care are. still and, are. I, and i care about the things that i do and yeah. was able to do things at least i continue to do things for our community right. so awesome. work hard things aren't going to be easy but that's part of it yeah um, where can people, where can people find you if they, if they want to <laughs> connect reach out where can people find you um yes so two things if you want to connect with me in an official capacity, it's jason.chavez, so J-A-S-O-N dot Chavez, which is C-H-A-V-E-Z, at Minneapolis, M-N dot G-O-V, which is gov, and that is my official email. If you want to talk about something that isn't government, it's Jason, so my name, J-A-S-O-N dot Cruz, which is C-R-U-Z dot Chavez, which is C-H-A-V-E-Z at gmail.com. Awesome. You guys heard it there. We're going to have the links for the programs that uh, Jason Shep mentioned in the, at the bottom of the description. Um, also, again, right, like support the merch. Woo, support, support the uh, support the uh, the brand here. We have a shirt here for, for you, Jason. And Oh. Yes, of course. Beautiful branding. Right, Yo, one right. of my favorite colors. That's what I'm saying. For you to rock. It's sleek. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Look at it. Look out for us on, on Instagram. Again, Instagram links down in the description you below. Send the link so I I'll send you guys the link. Stuff. Exactly. The link will be, once again, the link for the shop will be down below. Uh, we'll have all the resources there. Go ahead, follow us on Instagram. Like I said before, hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Follow us on Facebook. We're putting in work. Um, and we're going to hopefully try to get more people and try to get you back as well. Kind of see where you're at later yep. on in life. And um, yeah, leave a comment down below. It's been a great episode. Thank you to everybody in the back. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.